In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how I get backlinks using Harrow. Hi everyone, my name is Itamar Blauer, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest digital marketing related video content. Before we get started, leave a comment now if you've used Harrow before in the past. I want to know if you've used it, how well it's worked for you, and if you haven't used it, why haven't you used it? I'm just curious to see what you guys have to say. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is go on to helperreporter.com and when you're on this website, what you're going to do is you're going to hit sign up and when you click sign up, it's going to ask you some general questions like your first name, last name, email, etc and you just need to sign up for that. And then once you're signed up, you're gonna go on to your account details. And the thing is with your account details, the most important thing to make sure is that the email address is correct because the email address that you send the emails from, that's how the people are gonna be receiving the pitches that you make. And when you scroll down a bit, the other most important thing is selecting what your preferences are in terms of the subject areas that you want to be involved in. So in my case, I only check the business and finance one. I used to have high tech on there as well, and sometimes that can be related within SEO and digital marketing, but generally speaking, I found business and finance to be the best one to choose, but you can obviously choose as many as you want depending on your niche and depending on what you're using it for to build links. So once you've got those settings in place, you're gonna be getting emails three times a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. And these times are related to US time, so obviously you'll have to kind of make sure you know when that's coming through depending on where you live. So here's an example of an email that I got sent this morning and you'll notice the first part of the email is always gonna be something sponsored, so you can skip that and just focus your attention on the queries that they have. And the amount of queries will vary depending on the day or the time of day. Usually you'll get more in the afternoon, but the most important thing to do is just take a look through the queries and see where you can add the most value. So for example, we're gonna take a look at this query number 15, that's to do with e-commerce merchandising, share your top tips, for Yieldify and what you'll notice always is that the source, so the publication is always going to be in brackets at the end of the name of the query and usually there might be some times where you'll see it says anonymous over here but usually I don't really answer those ones because you always want to know exactly where your contributions are going to be published. If you do want to answer any queries that are anonymous you can feel free to do so. One other thing that you can do as well, if you wanna to check to see some metrics about the domain that you are looking for in terms of the media outlet, for example, this one is Yieldify, so what I would do is I would just do a Google search of Yieldify and then you would just copy the link address of their homepage, go into something like Ahrefs website authority checker, you put in the domain here, you check the website authority, and it will tell you there. So in this example, Yieldify has a DR of 70, which is quite high. So that can give you an indication if you do wanna try and be submitted on certain websites, if you have your own threshold of how much the minimum DR could be, for instance, but you can go ahead and do that. So let's, for this example, just go on to this one, query 15. And what you wanna see is the name of the person who's requesting this. You can see the outlet, and they'll always have the outlet after their name, but also the media outlet here. You've got the category, which is obviously the one that you've listed onto and that you can see. And the most important thing is the email here. So when you respond to these queries, you always wanna click on the email and begin sending uh, the email to that specific email. So don't change it. Uh, it's really important that you do send it to the right place. And obviously you don't really need to make any changes with the in terms of who the recipient is. We kind of look at the query, see what they're looking for. Read this carefully, because obviously if you don't read it carefully, they probably won't accept you anyway. So make sure you're reading this out. It's gonna tell you the requirements here. And with this example, it's not asking for any of your own details. And usually when they do that, I kind of skip it. So let's find something that actually requests details from you. And here we go. So for example, with this one, number 11, we can see the requirements are asking to 
be with the full answer, it's asking to provide a headshot. Um, and when they ask for a headshot, you should always add the link because they won't be able to see it if you attach an image and things like that. So always get a link to your headshot to include. It's asking here for a bio as well and a link to the website and Twitter. So usually they'll be asking you things like your first name, your last name, your Twitter account, LinkedIn account, your website, your job title, company name, your bio, headshot, things like that. And obviously it varies depending on the query that you're checking, but I will almost always answer the ones that specifically ask for your name, the title and the website URL, because obviously we're getting backlinks using these. So if they don't ask for your website, then you can be rest assured that most likely they're not going to be linking back to people, which is a shame. But generally speaking, most of the good ones or the good questions, the good queries will ask for a website URL so you can get a backlink. Let me just walk you through how I would answer these kind of queries. So let's see, for example, the one that was asking for the backlink and things like that. So this is about biggest misconception dev leads have it when it comes to a continuous integration. So the first thing you do is obviously click on the email here underneath the number that you're answering. For the subject line, it's quite important to get this right. In my experience, uh, I've used a lot of them that were like your Harrow re request. And then I would say something about uh, biggest misconceptions, da, 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 da. But that hasn't really worked out well for me. So the ones that have actually worked uh, the best for me is if I copy just the name, so it's their name and then the publication, keep that as the subject line, that's worked for me in the past. And also other times that has got me uh, accepted submissions, I've used a subject that's just more, a bit more succinct. So it's like a uh, biggest misconceptions that dev leads, uh, biggest misconception dev leads have, or something like that. So that would be the subject line. And then when it comes to answering this, usually I'll give a brief introduction. So I'll be like, hi, Angela. So I'm a London based SEO consultant that da, 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 da. and the rest of the stuff here is going to be relevant to what this query is asking for. So you kind of fill that out just to introduce it a little bit. And then what I would do is I would just go straight and answer the query that they're, that they're looking for. So biggest misconception dev leads have when it comes to continuous integration. So I would just talk about that. And sometimes they require more or less words or give you a guideline, things like that. But generally speaking, you want to be to the point, you don't want to faffle about you don't want to be using words for the sake of using words, because at the end of the day, these guys are going to have so many requests coming their way. And then once you fill that out, so you can say answer here, and then after that, I would say I would really appreciate it if your uh, if my insights can be included in your article and then I'd say my details are below. And then here is where I would put the requirements that they want. And also, if you have a signature, I'd recommend removing it because when you send pitches, people aren't going to be seeing it with the images attached. So just remove any signatures. And then everything that they're asking for, you just got to put so if for example, headshot, we do here and I put the URL, we would put the what they want bio. So we put the bio here, uh, website URL, we put link here. And then basically everything they want. So they wanted a Twitter link. So the Twitter link here, and just things like that. And then once you have that, you can pretty much hit send. And that's kind of the structure that I use to submit onto Harrow. So let me just show you uh, really quickly on the things that I've pitched. And sometimes when you go to your pitches, you'll still see question marks, even though you have already been accepted. So I have got accepted on more than what it shows here. But obviously, you can see that some people go in and kind of manually say that they've accepted uh, the requests. So just to show you that you can go onto your pitches and double check that your pitches have gone through. So that's how I get backlinks with Harrow. I hope you enjoyed this video. And also just remember that 
it can take a while for people to choose your answers to be submitted. You won't get every single one that you submit. That's just the nature of the game. But if you keep persistent, keep at it and provide value, you'll find that your conversion rates will be much, much higher on Harrow. So thank you guys for watching this video. I've been a Tamar Blower. If you like this video, leave a like rating below. That would really help me out. And we will see you in the next one. Hey. You've reached the end of this video, but don't worry, there's plenty more great content that you can watch right now. All you have to do is click one of the two video links on the left side of the screen. And also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to never miss out on future uploads.